Hey, 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 hey guys, and welcome to Dan's Pro Shop. It's a good one, it's a good one, it's a good one. Because we are here today because of you. You guys, the viewers, the subscribers. We hit it, we did it, we done it, we're there. 100K because of you. Uh, dude, dude, I never, ever, ever thought that this would ever happen. Man, if you came to me a year ago and said, hey Dan, why don't you start putting uh, all this useless crap you got rolling around in your noggin online and people will dig it. Pound rocks, guy, that ain't gonna happen. But here we are. I absolutely cannot believe this. I am totally 100% flabbergasted and grateful to you guys for making this a thing, to proving me wrong. Here's to you, guy. It's, to... thanks. This is awesome. Anyway, anyway, because I keep on getting a lot of questions, like, hey, Dan, how did you get where you are? How do you do what you do? Like, what happened? What's your story? So that's what we're gonna do today. We're just gonna have a little chat, a little therapy session, if you will. You just, uh, I'll give you uh, the down low on Maintenance Man Dan. Let's get into it. Well, I just realized that this is way in the way. Uh, yeah, McMaster car order. So, yeah, we'll deal with that later. So, guys, let's uh, take a park here. A lot of you guys have been asking me, what's my story? What's the deal, man? So, let's start at the beginning, I guess. Uh, I don't know. When I was a younger kid, teenage years, and high school and everything, I was just absolutely fascinated with anything and everything mechanical fabrication metalwork carpentry woodworking all that kind of stuff just anything to do with your hands i just wanted to do it so obviously metal shop wood shop everything in high school and then whenever you had the option to branch out and go to a vocational school i went to votech for welding for like two and a half some odd years and during my time there like it, it just clicked I don't know, me and fabrication and metalworking, I just absolutely loved it. I, I don't know why, it just worked and I got good at it. So by the time I graduated high school, I was certified in multiple different processes of welding. So like GMAW, TIG, flux cord, it, it just, it really kick-started my career and gave me a lot of, I don't know, blue collar avenues so like I could get a better paying job immediately after school. But during my time in high school, I utilized that skill and I worked at a rigging company. Now you may be asking, hey, what's rigging? Uh, I know this isn't a normal run of the mill term. Rigging is like machinery and like oversized load and just like odd things that are either really big or really heavy or really expensive even that need to be moved, transported. Like we did a lot of work with hospitals, like moving MRI machines, and just weird stuff like bridge components or we'd be in steel mills like taking armatures off of motors and just, but it was a cool job for a young kid. I had a lot of exposure to a lot of things and that's kind of where I got into the mechanicing side also. Like obviously as a younger kid, uh, I tinkered with different things like you had different vehicles or fixing lawnmowers, building go-karts, stuff like that. But at this job, I really got into it, especially the heavy side, like heavy haul trucks, trailers, like learning pneumatic systems, how air brakes work, and like injection pumps on Detroit engines. And just like, I kind of really got into that. But my primary job there was I was really the fabricator kid. So if something needed built, I would cut the steel out of a sheet and weld it together, grind it, paint it, yada, yada. So, I worked there during my time in high school and some odd summers here and there. And then after I graduated, I went to a tech school called UTI, Universal Technical Institute. This is kind of like the Princeton of mechanic schools. I don't know, there's several around here, but this one was definitely top tier after visiting several and talking to different people. So I went there and I majored in diesel engineering. You know, you kind of had to have like a base course of automotive so they knew you knew what you were talking about. You know, basic stuff, spark plugs, crankshafts, all this and that. 
But then once you got done with your core program, you majored in something specific. So I picked diesel. It was just kind of naturally fit. And I kind of excelled in engines and powertrains. And I ended up getting a couple ASEs while I was there. And at the time, I really thought that that was gonna be my career, that I was gonna be a heavy diesel technician. So after I graduated there, I got a job at like a fleet truck shop where they had contracts with different companies, you know, working on their trailers, like even like the local garbage company. Oh, it's, if you've ever worked on a garbage truck, I don't need to tell you. So I worked there for a while and boy, did the repetitiveness of that job get horrendous. I mean, you can only change so many clutches in a freight liner. You can only pull so many sleeves in a Mack engine. You can only do so many federal and state inspections on trailers every day and change tires and adjust brakes and wheel seals. And I, I know it's, it's probably like any other mechanic job. It's, it it kind of gets old, but trucks, especially trucks like fleet trucks that have millions of miles on, they almost all have the same problems. So you, you're quite literally doing the same thing every day. Like I kid you not, it would be nothing out of the realm of normal to do four or five clutches a week to pull injectors. Like it was just normal to be dropping a transmission first thing on Monday morning. And I just got so sick of it. So I kind of just bailed on that and found a different avenue. So one day I was sitting at home, I was flipping through the newspaper. If this gives you uh, perspective on the timeline here, I was looking for a job in the newspaper. I know that's not really a thing anymore. But I saw a local steel mill here in the town where I live was hiring welders slash fabricators and fitters. Like, hey, Bob's your uncle. I'm still a certified welder. Let's go check that out. So after I went there, went through the interview process and everything, they told me what they were paying for welder fitters. And uh, yeah, so I asked them if they were hiring for anything else. And the lady told me, hey, we actually have an opening in the maintenance department. Welcome to the rest of forever, huh? That is really what ignited my fascination and intrigue in industrial maintenance. I just accidentally fell into it because it was the better paying job position at the place I went to. So I worked at that mill for probably about four years, something like that, until eventually they closed. I had the, the whole thing shut down, they laid off 200 some odd people and it was just, I would probably still be working there if they didn't close. Honestly, I love that job. I learned so much, you know, like industrial, uh, electric, uh, more in depth hydraulics, automation, stuff like that. It's, it really exposed me to the electrical engineering side that I hadn't been exposed to before because I had been really strictly mechanical before then, but this really brought me into that electrical thing. Like dealing with 480 wasn't a thing to me before that and it became a normal everyday thing while I was there so I got really comfortable with it and the dude that I worked under was a seasoned electrician so like I really learned a lot from him obviously not formally but informally I feel like I got a really good education at that job and I just absolutely fell in love with that line of work but after they closed I was just kind of in a bind so I put my stuff on Indeed and Monster and all that. And I got a call from a rental company, you know, like United Rentals or Sunbelt or just like equipment rentals for job sites and stuff like that. And since I had had experience with like trucks and trailers and machinery and stuff, it was just kind of a natural fit. Like at that time I had never worked on a JLG boom lift, but you know, I've, I've fixed dozers and excavators and everything. How different can it be? It's a machine. It's got an engine. It's got hydraulics. You know, you understand the basics. You can pretty much fix anything. So if you have that mindset, don't let a new path discourage you because I mean, that really limits you. So just give it a wing, man. You got tools. You got the know how. Just do it anyway. So I got the job at this rental company. I worked there. I don't know, four or five years, probably. That was during the time of the huge natural gas Marsalis shale thing here in Pennsylvania, which is actually really lucrative. I mean, boy, me and a couple other guys that worked at that branch, 
we worked our tails off for those years because it was just an absolute explosion of growth here in western pennsylvania like there was stuff going on every you couldn't go down the highway for 10 miles and not see a new well pad on the side of the road they were just absolutely everywhere so i learned a lot in this job too kind of more uh i don't know, like the intelligent machinery if you want to say like really like electric over hydraulic stuff like solenoid valves and how they communicate with ecus and like operator stations and a lot of super high-tech integrated hydraulics because i mean these machines boom lifts excavators dozers and everything they're all hydraulically driven i mean there are electric ones yes but the majority or hydraulic everything, like hydraulic drive motors, hydraulic booms, hydraulic steering, everything. So it was a really good exposure for me that that gave me a different avenue. So I got my good electrical background from the mill that I worked at, and then I really, really, really tuned into my hydraulics at this equipment place, and that kind of became my thing. Like, yeah, we did heavier stuff too, like pulling axles and doing differentials out in the field. And yeah, that's... Well, long story short, that got old too. Not necessarily the work, because it was interesting. It was different every day. I genuinely enjoyed the work, but it was the environment. You're outside. Like, very rarely were you ever lucky enough to fix something under a roof, let alone climate control. Man, that was, that was basically a day off if you got to work on something inside with a heater. So, really, I don't know. I just... I couldn't see any longevity in that. And don't get me wrong, if that's what you do, if, if you're a field mechanic for trucks or equipment, it's hats off to you because that is hard work. I mean, my truck had a crane on it and for good reason. I used that thing every day. You could not change a tire on a telehandler, especially if it was foam filled or like full of beet juice or something. Those tires are several hundred pounds. Like you can't even flip it up off the ground unless you're like Brock Hepler. It's, back breaking work and it's just not to mention like i said the elements so it could be 140 in the middle of august and you're out there breaking tires in a cornfield or it could be negative 10 and you're laying underneath a dozer taking belly pans off and breaking your fingers in the process because it's so cold you can't do anything so you work for 10 minutes go sit in the truck for 10 minutes so you can feel your feet again and go it's just, I saw myself getting old rapidly, and it kind of made me resent myself. I, I don't know if that's the right way to say it, but I knew it wouldn't last. And not to mention, because of that big boom that was going on at the time, it was a very demanding job. Like, I'd be getting calls at 2 o'clock in the morning, hey, this machine broke down in West Virginia, you got to get on this pad right now. And at that time in my life, I was really trying to start my family. So spending that much time away from home was starting to become an issue and I saw that. So luckily, I started to veer away from that before it became an issue. Because you can always find a new job. You cannot find a new family. So if, if, if anything, take that away from this. I mean, don't get me wrong, the money was freaking awesome. But what's the trade-off here? Like, what is your personal life worth versus your checking account. But I mean, at that point when you're young, it's, it's, you can do it, but I'm really glad I don't do it now. Let's just say that. So one day on my way home from that job, there is a, a particular street around my neighborhood that has a couple mills and plants and everything on it that I passed every day on my way home. And one day, I just, I don't know, I got a wild hair up my butt. I just stopped at one of them and started pounding on the door. Like, hey, do you guys have machines in that building? I'm willing to bet that they break. And uh, conveniently enough, I fix machines. You know, at that time, I didn't even know what this place did. Turns out, it's a plastic manufacturing plant. At that time in my life, I had absolutely no idea. I was so naive to the whole polymer sector. And now, I know so much about plastic, it's ridiculous. Like, I can't walk down the aisle in Walmart without analyzing all the plastic jugs sitting on the shelf. Like, oh, that mold had too much water, or that plastic was too hot when it was coming out. 
or this one there wasn't enough cooling time or they overpacked this one and flashed it it's it just becomes part of your psyche anyway I sweet talked them enough to get me into an interview where I could actually show the portfolio and my history and everything so I had to sit down with the owner and the plant manager and honestly I thought this was like the most like organic way that I'd ever gotten a job because it wasn't a formal application I guess like I said I just beat on the door someone answered and I got the ability to talk to someone that face-to-face -face interaction during an interview especially since I've been on the other side of that before where I've hired people and that meeting like the shaking a hand you know seeing how somebody presents themselves how they handle their words and let's be honest in an interview is a stressful time because the person applying obviously wants the job so they want something from you and the interviewer the the people that are hiring i mean they're they may be in a bind they may need someone so like it, i don't know it's stressful for everybody so seeing how people handle themselves in that situation is a huge part of the interview process you can really get a feel for someone when they're sitting on the other side of the table physically talking to you. You can't get that over an email or however you apply for jobs today. I just think it's absolute bull crap, but whatever. So I went through that process and everything was really good. Like we all got along. It was just kind of like a natural click. Everybody liked everything and it just kind of worked. So I started here. That was seven and a half years ago. Um, yeah. And, uh, here we are. The rest is history, man. Which leads us up to the point where everybody keeps on asking, how did this whole mechatronics engineer thing happen? Well, if you follow the timeline here, I never mentioned going to school to get an engineering degree. Well, I actually kind of fell into a beautiful accident in my time here at the plastic plant. There is a local community college here in Pittsburgh that offers all kinds of programs just like any other community college. Well, there is like a, I don't know, like a job sharing, training, apprenticeship program thing that they offer through like a third party subsidiary thing, whatever. Either way, this organization approached the plant here about having an apprenticeship program where they would take kids from high school and bring them into the plant so they could apprentice under me to learn a trade, not specifically the plastic stuff, but like industrial engineering, like uh, maintenance, just stuff like this. So they could have a leg up in the workforce by the time that they graduate. I thought this was absolutely awesome because if something like this was available to me while I was in high school, I probably would have done it. Anyway, whenever this whole thing started, they offered me the opportunity to go to school while this thing was happening so I could earn my own engineering degree in mechatronics. And dude, has it been the coolest thing ever? So I know this may not be like an everybody thing. Like I said, I absolutely fell into this blind and it was just a beautiful accident. So during my time here, I was able to work, earn money to support my family and everything, but at the same time, I was attending college to learn mechatronics like formally. Yes, I had a strong background in all this stuff, but I didn't have that paper, that institutionalized thing that said, yeah, this dude knows what he's talking about. So that was just absolutely awesome how that whole thing fell together. And I'm so thankful for the entire thing. Like it was just absolutely incredible how it just worked. So yeah, I know I'm rambling here, but long story short, that's how the mechatronics thing happened. And another question I get all the time is, how did this YouTube thing start? Like what sparked this? Why did it happen? Is it worth it? Why, what's, what's the point here? Well, uh, believe it or not, actually a coworker here, uh, a dude well more like, I don't know, electronically advanced with all this technology, computers and gaming and social media and stuff. Like, I was the biggest anti-social media person ever. I mean, ask my wife. I was anti-Facebook, anti-, -Facebook, anti 
TikTok. It's what I just wanted nothing to do with it. I was just an introverted guy that I liked me and my circle, and I, I don't know. But between the dude here and believe it or not, my wife, they talked me into starting this YouTube thing because. I don't I feel like I've had a lot of exposure to a lot of different fields and different careers. So I've gathered a pretty good stockpile, a cornucopia, if you will, of knowledge in different areas. And it's it's a good base, I think. I'm not trying to toot my horn or anything here, but I have been exposed to a lot of stuff in, I don't know, a 20 some odd year period. So my wife says, why not start doing this YouTube thing and put some of your stuff out there? And the more and more I thought about this, I'm like, you know, why not? You know, if, if a channel like Dan's Pro Shop was available to me when I was a kid, I would have been absolutely obsessed with it. I'm not trying to promote myself, even if that's the way it sounds, but like, if I look back, if 18 year old Dan found this channel, dude, I would have been locked on because this stuff just fits me. I know this may not be a you thing, not nearly as in depth as me, but I am just, I love this techie crap, how stuff works. Like I just always had that fascination, just tear it apart, figure out how it works and hope you can put it back together again. But yeah, honestly, my wife gave me that push. She's like, just do it, give it a swing, see how it goes. And Man, I don't need to tell you guys, look, it went. Look, it's unbelievable, the timeline here, from when I started to where we are now, and it's just, it's, it's off the charts. It's unreal because of you guys. So, yeah, I saw the value in putting this stuff out there. And naturally, I've gotten progressively better at this video thing since I started. If you want to look back at some of my earlier crap, man, it's just, it's rough. I mean, it's there, but it's rough. I'm not saying I'm good now. I mean, I'm no Ben Affleck here, but I'm the entire production crew and everything. So what you see is all me, like the editing. Uh, I've gotten better. It's not great, but better. We're getting there. And that can lead us into the real driving point here. The thing, it like, you know, whenever a man sits down in the corner and he's just quietly staring off at the wall, he's, what are you thinking about? Well, I had some deep thought. And like I mentioned earlier, we were starting a family, right? So I viewed this, this YouTube thing. I know YouTube is not going anywhere. It, it'll be here long after all of us are gone. So I took this as a formal opportunity. You know, not all of us were fortunate enough to grow up with that father figure in our lives. You know, that male role model to like, come here son, help me sharpen the blades on the lawnmower. Or your mom's having trouble with the dishwasher. Let's rip the pump out and see what's going on. I feel like that is a huge, part of a young man's life growing up with his dad. So due to a couple of very close and real past experiences, if you guys are in this field, you know, big injuries, big accidents and fatalities are a very, very real possibility in this industry. Not this industry specifically, but just heavy industry. And I have personally been involved with several bad accidents. Luckily, nothing bad enough to like permanently disfigure or anything, but I've had some pretty rough injuries that I was off for several months to heal. And that really makes you come a little closer with yourself and think about what matters. Like I had mentioned, my family is absolutely everything to me. I have a beautiful, amazing, brilliant wife that is way smarter than I am in like every way. And just ask anyone that we know, they will tell you the same thing. She is tougher than I am. 
she's better looking than I am and way smarter than me. And we have been blessed enough that we have two beautiful, amazing boys together. And I just, man, you don't know what love is until you have kids. I know you hear this from people and you're like, ah, you know, whatever. Dude, when it happens to you, you change immediately. You completely forget the person that you used to be and now you are just dad. And that is the coolest thing ever. Which circles me back to this YouTube thing here. Like I said, fatality is a real thing, and that is a very real daily scare. Obviously, I try to be careful at work, but things happen. So God forbid something were to ever happen to me where I don't come home. I know that these videos will be here forever. So my boys can still grow up learning things from their dad. And that was really the driving point that made this, made me want to do this. I know this may sound sappy, but it makes sense to me and it makes it worth it. Even if none of you guys were here to view this, just knowing that my boys can see it later makes the whole thing worth it. <sighs> I'm sorry about breaking down on you there a little bit, but like I said, when you become a parent, it changes you. The way you view everything is completely different and your life revolves around that kid or those kids. Like family is absolutely everything. And that's quite literally all that meant. That's, that's why we do what we do. I mean, I wouldn't be here doing this at all if I didn't have a family to support. But I love them, I respect them, and I want, to, I want them to have the best life that I can provide for them. So yeah, that kind of brings us full circle. That's kind of a rough breakdown of beginning to now of Dan. So hopefully this answers a lot of your questions and gives you a clearer background on a little bit of who I am and how I got to where I am now and how that whole thing happened. And like I said, thank you guys for making this happen. Like I said in the beginning, this is absolutely unreal. I never in a million years thought this would be a thing, but you guys proved me wrong by putting this freaking thing on a rocket ship to the moon. It's just, I cannot thank you guys enough because the, YouTube is a viewer-based thing. And I'm sure like all TV is or whatever, but this thing wouldn't have succeeded without you. So I can not thank you enough for making this happen. I mean, 100K, and it's, I'm sure Mr. Beast doesn't care about 100K. He probably doesn't remember when that happened. But to me, this is huge. This is a freaking milestone. So thank you guys so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So keep on coming around. I'm sure that we're gonna have way more stuff going on because you know, and especially in my life, everything's broke all the time. So we're always fixing something. And heck, I like learning new stuff. So come along, let's learn some stuff together. And I will see you guys next time.